my name is Monica Smith and I'm a speech and language therapist and I have a particular interest and specialism in stammering um, but I'm also a general speech and language therapist as well. So stammering is sometimes called stammering, could be called stuttering, Americans call it stuttering. Um, the sort of medical term is disfluency um, and I like the term disfluency because that really describes what it is because stammering or disfluency is the interruption of fluency. It's when fluent speech becomes less fluent or disfluent. Um, and there are three types of stammering behaviour that you can have. Um, the first one could be a repetition of sounds. Um, it could be the prolongation of a sound, so stretching out of a sound. Or it could be actual blocking, a physical blocking. And sometimes associated with that, you can have lots of physical characteristics like jerks, twitching, blinking, that can be uh, alongside that. And that's the sort of overt stammering behaviour but stammering is also covert behaviour and can be described as um, something which has covert behaviours attached to it and so the covert behaviours would be things like word avoidance, situation avoidance, stress, anxiety, social phobia so there's quite it's quite a, a big area it's not just about the actual stammering where you can hear there's actually a lot of stuff that goes on beneath the surface and that's why we use an iceberg often to describe it that the overt things are the things you can see out of the water and the covert behaviours, the anxiety, the stress, the avoidance of situations and the impact it's having on somebody's life are the things that you can't normally see quite so easily. People choose jobs because of their stammer. They choose all sorts of different behaviours. They'll choose hobbies. They'll not do things because of their stammer. And so the impact of the stammer is massive. And the impact of changing your life because of the way you speak or because of uh, the anxiety that you have about speaking can be huge and, and it has an impact on every other area of your life. And the long term impact um, can be massive on your sort of emotional well-being and your mental health. Well, we use a thing called the, the multifactorial model to explain how stammering occurs. Um, and there are sort of four elements to the multifactorial model. The first one is physiological. Um, and that's just about our bodies and how we're built, really. Um, you're more likely to stammer if you're a boy, so if you're a male person. You're more likely to have a stammer if you've got someone in your family that stammers because we know there's a genetic link. Very, very recently, we've had some um, research going on at the moment about how our brains are forming. And there is an actual physiological, researchers are thinking there's a, a physiological element or some things that people who stammer when they've had their brain scanned, they've got something in common to do with the structure of their brain. So there's a physiological element. There is also a speech and language element. So anybody who has had any interruption to their development of speech and language, so somebody who's developed their speech and language as a child quite slowly, had some sort of uh, interruption to that or some disordered development, or it could be somebody that developed their speech and language really, really quickly, was a very quick talker. Um, and so, for example, they were very keen to speak um, and had some quite a lot of vocabulary, but perhaps had issues with grammar or with actual syntax, putting words into sentences. And then there are other elements too. There's personality, um, people who are very, very um, perfectionist, people who find failure very, very difficult to cope with. And then the other um, element is to do with your environment. So your actual communication environment is massively important. Um, people who find, who uh, perhaps communicate in a situation where they find it difficult to take turns, they're very, very tired. So fatigue can have a massive impact on stammering. Um, there are a whole massive amounts of, of reasons or, or situations that could mean that you're predisposed to be someone who stammers, but equally all these things could exist and you might not stammer. And the Michael Palin Centre, um, often in their training that I've been on, will just say that actually it's just down to just luck, luck of the draw. It's one of those things you will either get it or you won't. Um, and it's very, very difficult to pinpoint the actual reason why. And it's less important for me as a speech and language therapist as to, to actually know why. It's just about how all these, imp all these other things impact on your talking and impact on your fluency. That's what I'm interested in. My advice would be to anybody who is working with somebody who's got a stammer, so a teacher or a parent, or you've got a friend who stammers, the biggest piece of advice I would give you is just to give them time and to wait for them to say what they've got to say. Um, finishing people's sentences, although it's very tempting, is really, really unhelpful sometimes because 
for a start off, you might be actually giving them the wrong word sometimes and they've got to start all over again. So just waiting and maintaining the eye contact and making sure the person you're talking to is relaxed and realises that you're ready to wait and you're interested in what they're saying rather than how they're saying it. Because actually, fundamentally, that is the most important thing. It's the actual content of what somebody's saying. It's far more important than the actual way that they're saying it. The good thing about any sort of speech technique or finding the thing that works for you is that the impact is not just on your fluency, but it's also on your self-esteem. It affects everything, doesn't it? You know, self-esteem and confidence is the thing, is the sort of fuel we need to get by every day. Um, and anything that's going to help you has a knock-on effect, and that's the thing with fluency. But anything that's going to improve confidence and make you want to speak to a variety of people will take the sort of fear out of those unknown situations so if you're speaking more and feeling more confident about speaking to lots of different people in lots of different places that's only going to be for the good. International Stammering Awareness Day is a really really important day because um, by uh, by the name you we know it's about raising awareness um, of stammering um, people basically talking openly about stammering and talking to people who stammer, talking to the families of people who stammer, sharing ideas, sharing techniques, and sharing the things that help us feel happier about communicating, because ultimately that's the goal. Fluency is not the goal. It's actually feeling happier and more confident about talking and talking as much as we can and communicating as successfully as we can. And so there are lots of events going on throughout the world. There's a lot of stuff that's going to be on social media about it. There's a lot of papers that have been shared. If people want to go to the ISAD uh, website, they can have a look at all the papers and the films and the bits of artwork and poetry that have been produced. There's a whole wealth of information on there that's really, really helpful to have a look at. And also find out about new research about um, stammering because everything that we do, and particularly with the NHS, we're very aware of that, that any treatment that we do has to have an evidence base to it. Um, and so we're really interested in everything that has a really good, strong evidence be base behind it before we recommend it or actually use it on our patients.